Lismore, a market town in County Waterford, Ireland. It lies in the Blackwater Valley at the southern foot of the Knockmildown Mountains. A monastery was founded in Lismore by St. Carter about 633. In the 9th and the 10th centuries, it was plundered by the Norsemen. The baronial castle erected by Prince John, later King of England in 1185, was the residence of the bishops of Lismore until the 14th century. In 1581, the manor was granted Sir Walter Raleigh, and from him it passed to Richard Boyle in 1602. Richard Boyle, one of the founders of modern chemistry, was born in the manor in 1627. In 1753, the castle passed to the Duke of Devonshire, the fourth Duke of Devonshire, whose successor still retains it. Founded by St. Makuda, also known as St. Cartage, first abbot of Lismore, the town is renowned for its early ecclesiastical history and the scholarship of Lismore Abbey. The imposing Lismore Castle, situated on the site of the old monastery since medieval times, lies on a steep hill overlooking the town and the Blackwater Valley. It can trace an 800-year-old history, linking the varied historic relations between England and Ireland. Originally built following the arrival of Henry II's son, Prince John, in the 12th century, the castle was a bishop's palace up to the 16th century. Subsequently owned by Sir Walter Raleigh, until his demise, it was sold to Richard Boyle, controversial first Earl of Cork, described by historian R.F. Foster in his modern Ireland as an epitome of Elizabethan adventurer colonist in Ireland. In 1627, the castle was the birthplace of the first Earl's most famous son, Robert Boyle. Known as the father of modern chemistry, Boyle was chased off his lands in Ireland during the Irish Rebellion of 1641, following which his sons recovered the family estates after suppression of the rebellion. St. Carter's Cathedral, which dates from 1633, still the ecclesiastical significance of the land goes back to the 7th century when St. Carthage founded a monastery here. Due to the presence of the religious community, Lismore was known throughout Europe as a place of learning. St. Carthage Cathedral here in Lismore is a Church of Ireland cathedral. It's in the ecclesiastical province of Dublin, formerly the Cathedral of the Doyces of Lismore. It is now one of six cathedrals in the United Diocese of Cashel and Ossory. The medieval cathedral was in ruins after a fire in the 17th century. The choir was re-roofed by Richard Boyle, first Earl of Cork. The cathedral was again destroyed in 1630 and rebuilt starting in 1663 with input from architect William Robinson. It was re-roofed and refurbished in the 18th century. All the various rebuilding and reconstruction work have involved input from such architects as Sir William Robinson, Sir Richard Morrison and George and James Payne. Lord Charles Cavendish was buried at Lismore Cathedral in 1944.
Well, good morning, folks. I'm here on Lady Louisa's Walk, um, the River Blackwater on my left-hand side, and I'm embarking on the fourth stage of St. Declan's Way. This stage will take me from Lismore in West Waterford, a heritage town, and the, situ and the site of the famous uh, Lismore Castle, and this will take me across West Waterford countryside to Aglish. Lady Louisa was the daughter of the seventh Duke of Devonshire, ancestor of the current owner of Lismore Castle, the twelfth Duke of Devonshire. Since I began my adventures on St. Declan's Way, and this being the fourth stage, I've been blessed with weather right throughout all stages. Not a drop of rain, and this morning is no different. It's an absolutely gorgeous morning. And I'm here in, in this magnificent woodland, with the birds singing, the sun has arisen, I'm up and about and on my way. You can see there to the left and the right of your picture wild garlic and the aroma wafting up towards my nostrils is overwhelming. Pity we can't bottle this as we pass along. Now having departed Lismore, my next port of call will be Capoquin. What an absolutely stunning morning to be out and about. Now, with Lismore a kilometre or so behind me, the momentum has been set and achieved so, pedal to the metal and head on our way. The sound of nature this morning is stunning. I mean, just take a look at what is ahead of me. Notice the uh, countryside that I'm passing through. It is so peaceful, so calm. Little bit of road noise from the main road about a kilometre or so across the river, but I'll be losing all that shortly. The bluebells are in bloom, the ferns, the wild garlic, the trees are all in leaf, the birds are singing. St. Declan's Way sign says straight on. So, I mean, what else would you want to be doing this morning? For goodness sake, what else? Embrace the great outdoors that we have in this country. Um, winter and summer, it doesn't make a difference. Get up and get out. If you have the time, get out. Take it from me. You will feel a lot better. And I'm certain you will not regret making the effort. Don't let weather and personal circumstances 
offer excuses not to get up and get out. So thank you for popping along with me once more. This is a, a beautiful scene as opposed to crossing the Knockmill Down Mountains. Now, the Knockmill Down Mountains provided their own adventure, um, and I liked it. That was a huge trick for stage three, num uh, 38.9 kilometers. But I did it, I completed it all in the one go. Now, Walking along here, I've just observed that in wet weather, or after extended periods of wet weather, this particular area would certainly be underwater. So um, this is probably the time of the year to go and do St. Declan's Way. I am now, in the next few moments, going to remove the fleece. It was nippy enough this morning as regards as regards chilly when I got out of the bed, had my breakfast packed up and got my backside to, to Lismore. But I think now it's time to get rid of the fleece. The backpack is even more heavier today because I have three bigger, they're new batteries for the technology and they're after increasing the weight and I know because I can feel it on the shoulders but God is beautiful oh I must say it to you all all of those you all of those who are watching this vlog contemplate doing a section or all sections of St. Declan's Way as I do it alone I can see and hear everything. Nothing gets past me. So, if you want to do it with a group, that's fine. As I said to you before, if that floats your boat, that's the boat you get yourself into. I, on the other hand, swim alone. In other words, I walk alone. Now the quietness is beginning to present. Now I'm looking at two swans here which I'll show you and the far bank of the river Blackwater. Actually there is the center of your picture on the opposite bank of the river Blackwater you got three swans. Sun glistening glistening there on the water. Now, 
I say goodbye to the River Blackwater for a while because the uh, St. Declan's Way arrow points to my right so we head into unfamiliar territory until we rejoin the Blackwater later on so here we go nature at its best the round hill anglo-norman moss and bailey in lismore this large defensive earthen castle known as a moss and bailey and the site that we see today was probably constructed by the anglo-normans in the late 12th century given its size and location, the Moth and Bailey may have been constructed to an earlier site. The Moth and Bailey is an early form of castle consisting of a flat topped steep side earthen mound supporting a wooden tower with an associated courtyard or bailey. I must say that this is going to be a beautiful day for walking. And on a pilgrim walk, my God, the gods, St. Declan, you, you must be up there because the weather from the start of this pilgrim walk has been divine every day without fail. So I'm very lucky. I'm a sort of humored by what I see here, a tree which is leaning out towards this narrow less travel road so instead of cutting it down and I'm not in favor of cutting trees down but if a high-sided vehicle or a coach was keeping in to to avoid an oncoming vehicle it would catch this why not put the chainsaw on this but instead no we put a yellow paint mark on it to alert people that there's an obstacle overhanging the road Walking all the stages of this St. Declan Pilgrim Way, the one thing that stands out, well, that stands out for me, is the beauty of the countryside. And the, the way the, the Pilgrim Way traverses some of the most beautiful Tipperary and Waterford countryside that you could ever see. A countryside that you may not see when you're traversing the main road in a car. But I, I can say that the peace and the quiet on all routes so far to date, for me, on this De St. Declan's Way has been truly therapeutic. The peace and the quiet, it is, it is just beautiful. So I thoroughly recommend you to consider perhaps doing a stage or two of this St. Declan's Way. Something that you may be comfortable with because it's not a, a simple walk in the park, believe me, but it's very doable. You need a level of fitness. Well, I'm here in Capo Quinn. I'm here on the banks once again of the river Blackwater. I rejoined the 10 minutes ago, having trekked from Lismore to here, which is Capo Quinn. Richard Boyle, the Earl of Cork, instituted plans for a bridge to be constructed across the river bend at Capo Quinn in the early 1600s. He made money in land and iron, and in 1625, contracted Ralph Curtis, specialist bridge builder, to construct a wooden structure at the bend of the River Blackwater in Capoquin. Curtis also built a similar bridge at Fermoy at about the same time. Although Boyle claimed that philanthropic motives were behind his financing of the bridge, this seems somewhat disingenuous, a claim given that he had much to gain financially from increased traffic and trade encouraged by a bridge across the Blackwater. 
Damage was sustained to the bridge in these early years by flooding, and its sister bridge in Fermoy was completely destroyed and carried away in dramatic flooding within a few years of construction. Capo Queen, however, grew as a center of commerce. The bridge featured prominently in military strategy, both in the Irish Rebellion of the 1640s and in the subsequent Cromwellian campaign due to its value as a strategic crossing place. Early 19th century plans to construct a new bridge foundered through lack of commitment and finance. In 1812, for example, William Robertson's design for a new stone bridge with five arches with a footpath on, each side, on either side was never erected. In the early 1840s, Sir Richard Keane referred his plans for a stone bridge which would have 50 foot arches and a drawbridge. But this too was deemed an extravagantly expensive investment and plans were abandoned. In the mid 1860s, the Famine Relief Act required a designated project and this proved the impetus for the construction of the current bridge, a limestone structure comprising six arches, measuring 34 feet wide and with a 30 foot arch on dry ground. There is a footpath on the left hand side of the bridge as you leave Capoquin. The loan of £4,000 was received from the Office of Public Works and on the 18th of September 1847 Sir Richard Keane Bart laid the first stone before what was described as an enthusiastic crowd. Hamilton White were the contractors and although officially named the Victoria Bridge after Queen Victoria, the bridge was never referred to as such by, local pop by the local population. But I'm here in absolutely stunning, gorgeous weather. Um, it is really warm now, so I have a hot trek ahead of me now from here to Villiers, the back of Villiers town and on into Aglish. Um, fair day's walking, good bit of distance, but I'm up for the task. A pilgrim way, so whatever is dished out this morning, I'll accept once again as penance for those sins that I think I didn't com commit. I hear you sniggering there in the background. Okay, well, I'm about to cross over the River Blackwater here at Capaquin Bridge. So from here on in now, I'll be, from here from the bridge, I'll be heading into the village of Capoquin and heading on out into beautiful West Waterford countryside again. So the river there over my shoulder is once again, the River Blackwater. I'm walking down the main street of Capoquin and I it's early in the morning and I still seem to have the place to myself thanks be to goodness there's a few stragglers hanging around shops and things but it's still early in the morning it's not even 8 30 as yet but um, I have the place to myself somebody driving an alien there behind me but I have the place to myself so Kappa Quinn, County Waterford. So up here now to get my St. Declan's Way passport stamped and then I'll be on my way further into the country. That's another job done. Don't forget if you do walk St. Declan's Way, you need to have your passport stamped at the places that are identified on the passport.
I think I might now be at the beginning of where traffic once again will be a memory. It's been pretty hectic there coming through from the, the outskirts of uh, Kappa Quinn to the outskirts at this end. So now I'm heading on to Eglish. Hopefully, as I get further into the Waterford countryside, the traffic noise will cease to be and I can rejoin and be in harmony with nature. You know you're in the month, early in the month of May, when you see fields of silage cut down, ready for collection. So this is certainly the weather to mow and collect the silage. So there's a big, big field there of, of um, silage. It's only been knocked, I'd say, yesterday. It's quite fresh looking on the ground, but I'd say it'll be picked up today or tonight. Because these guys now, they work through the night and weather like this to get all this silage cut and brought in. Now I'm about two and a half kilometers outside Capo Quinn, heading for Dramana Bridge. But the sound of nature overhead is overwhelming. It's a morning tonic. So from Lismore to Capo Quinn, I think it's around seven kilometers. It took me an hour and seven minutes. So that, that, that's me adhering to my own 0.62, 6.4 kilometers an hour walking pace, which is pretty good even if I say so myself. I'm approaching Dramana Bridge. It's a folly of sorts. And I won't dilly-dally now and start telling you the story of how this bridge came about. But I will do so in the video attached obviously but at this hour of the morning I'll just show you as I go through and I'll give you the history of the said bridge during the video. Dramana Gate Bridge was originally built from wood and papier mache to greet the owner of Dramana House Henry Villiers Stewart and his wife Theresia Pauline Ott of Vienna on returning from their honeymoon in 1826. Henry Villiers Stewart inherited Dramana House and the state in 1809 at the age of six. In 1826, he married an Austrian widow, Theresia Pauline Ott, of Vienna. Their arrival at Dramana from their honeymoon was celebrated by the tenants who erected a triumphal arch and gate lodge in Hindu Gothic style to the design of local architect Martin Day. The gate lodge comprises of a central pointed archway topped with an onion dome and two side chambers, each with four windows and a fireplace. Both chambers would have been brightly lit in its heyday. It is believed to have been inspired by John Nash's famous pavilion for the Prince Regent and is the only Irish example of the Brighton pavilion style of architecture. The gate structure was restored by the Irish Georgia Society in the 1960s and again by Waterford County Council in 1990. Visiting Dramana Gate, it is approached via a short bridge and is the main entrance to Dramana House, which is open to the public. The bridge over the River Finisk was replaced in 1971.
I'm now eventually after reaching roads less traveled. Now these are, these are roads which I'd say I might f meet the occasional vehicle and probably no human being. But this is now my kind of walking territory. You can hear the sound of nature. You can feel the breeze. You can feel the heat of the sun. And you're alone with your thoughts. You're the only person in the world, which I feel I am right now. This is an unbelievable experience. This St. Declan Pilgrim Way. I, for the, for the final time, please forgive me, for the final time, I would encourage all who embrace a little bit of walking or a lot of walking to consider doing a few stages, if not all of this St. Declan's Pilgrim Way walk. It is, it is stunning. The countryside is stunning. Distances are great, but sure, that's what it's all about. You don't expect to go out and be back home in a half an hour, really. Come on. So I'm on the move again now, okay? Walking along here this morning, we're really off the beaten track now. Really off the beaten track. And it's so quiet, you can hear all sounds of nature. No vehicle or traffic sounds at all. Not even agricultural machinery. But the, the countryside down here, between Capaquin and Villiers Town, off towards Villiers Town and Anglish. It's, it's absolutely stunning countryside. My God, it's just, it's the, it's after winning, I'm after winning the lotto this morning to be able to get weather like this and enjoy what I'm doing and have the, have the countryside to myself. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, Saint Declan. Getting out of the bed early, making the effort, packing the lunch and the equipment, getting out as the sun comes over the horizon from the east and get out into the highways and byways, mostly byways. Morning therapy with a capital T. Morning therapy. You know you're in the Irish countryside early in the morning when you hear the sound of nature over your head that you've just been listening to on roads less traveled more nature than you could get any place else so we continue or I continue on my merry way towards Aglish the termination point of stage four of St. Declan's Pilgrim Way. Walking here now is a sort of precarious because the grass is a meter tall and if there's uh, an open grave well I'm down into it. I mean, it's a shame really to see graveyards, old graveyards with this level of grass and undergrowth. It is, I think it's crazy. 
Kilmolash started out its life as an early ecclesiastical site dedicated to St. Malays, who was venerated locally on the 17th of January. There is no evidence, written or physical, to suggest that the site was at any time a place of pilgrimage, although this cannot be ruled out completely. The annals record that the site was plundered by Norsemen in AD 833. In AD 912, Cormac MacQuillan, Bishop and Vice Abbot of Lismore, King of Dacia, is also recorded as the Abbot of Sel Molais Kilmalash. Suggesting Kilmalash was in the sphere of influence of Lismore. By the later medieval period, the church had become the parish for the parish of Kilmalash. Today, the site consists of the ruins of a multi-period church surrounded by a D-shaped graveyard. The graveyard is defined by a wooden fence and an earth and stone bank. The modern by-road follows the curve of the graveyard. As I said to you on my previous, previous walk stages on the St. Declan's Way, if only the stonework could talk and tell the stories of a bygone era. The fabric of the building is constructed from sandstone and is in a poor state of repair and in need of some form of conservation, especially the north and south walls. This little church has many interesting architectural features and the west wall is particularly striking with its finely carved doorway with hooded moulding and holy water stoop. The church is rectangular in shape and consists of a nave and chancel divided by a rounded chancel arch. The nave and east wall are largely late medieval in date while the chancel walls appear to be much earlier possibly even 12th century. A double belfry survives in the west gable positioned over an OG-headed gallery window. Now like my last day out on stage 3 where I walked from Golden Bridge to Mount Mellory and on into Lismore, I took my lunch in a quaint medieval graveyard at Ladies Abbey and now I am thinking of having my lunch here in this place of peace and quietness a place that I, that I know I won't be interrupted so I'm here at this place just having partaken in a bit of lunch and um, my first time sitting down since I left Lismore this morning uh, it's been a beautiful walk so far I still have a long hike ahead of me to Aglish and um, but I thoroughly enjoying it so what could what else could I ask for now I hope I'm not disturbing the people that are sleeping here um, I'm not uh, I'll just leave my footprints and I'll take everything else away so love this walk absolutely love this walk You can see there at the top of the hill, at the top of that green field, there are eight wind turbines. Not one is making an effort to do a revolution because it's so calm and so mild. So if you had a hundred of them up there, it would be the same thing. Perhaps offshore you get a breeze all the time. Who knows? We'll have to take it up with the Minister for Bicycles, Mr. Ryan Here in the vicinity of Knockness Gar, 
the ancient Borja Nanave, the old road of the saints, towards Lismore, connects to St. Brendan's Road, which leads south in the direction of Ardmore. In 1642, during the War of the Three Kingdoms, forces under the command of brothers Roger Boyle, Lord Brokehill, and Richard Boyle, Lord Dungarvan, passed through here from Lismore on their way to lay siege to Ardmore. Now, some of this track as I head into this field, agricultural land here, is pretty overgrown. Imagine walking through that now in a wet, on a wet day. Um, you'd be pretty miserable after half an hour. This particular track skirts along by the fields. It starts to gain altitude. This particular area of the track now needs intervention as regards maintenance because it's pretty overgrown with nestles and thistles and grass and briars and bushes and God knows what else is here. As it goes around this field, skirts around the field and goes up there towards your right by that ditch in front of you. Going back and reiterating, those of you that haven't been on St. Declan's Way, but have heard about it, and God knows everybody hears about it, just make sure that you have a level of fitness above normal or average, because this will, this, the distances aren't huge. Well, hello folks, I'm taking a well-earned breather here at the top end of a big field surrounded by vegetation in bloom and livestock howling for something to eat in front of me. I'm looking back down the valley from my elevated perch at majestic countryside reaching all the ways up to the Knockmill Downs. The Knockmill Downs I traversed last week on a mammoth trek from Goten Bridge in Tipperary to Lismore in West County Waterford via Mount Mallory. This is my fourth stage, one to go. It's not an easy walk. Do not be convinced that this is a walk in the park you need to have a level of fitness, determination, be well and truly up for the challenge because I've just come up 15 minutes up a hill here now from one of the main roads and with a very heavy backpack of course it's, it's, it can be tough going but I have 23 degrees over my head which I embrace wholeheartedly but it is some day, some walk this is some pilgrim trek. Get out and do it. Do it! Now I've given you the gospel according to Saint James. So we'll continue, or I'll continue rather, on my trek on the Saint Declan's pilgrim way. So Saint James is on the move once again. Okay. We have to put a bit of humour, I suppose, into this punishment for my sins. I didn't realise that I needed so much punishment for the few m menial sins that I might have committed, or indeed that I have committed. But however, whatever sins I have done, I'm certainly paying for it with penance on this walk. But I love it. When I'm gazing at 
the sky Stars are bathing in moonlight I remember you On this stage four no facilities. When you leave Lismore, you have Kappa Quinn. After Kappa Quinn, nothing as regards shops until you arrive at Aglish. And there is a service station there. You can top up on goodies. Just be careful as you walk along close to fence lines and so forth. When you come to gates and stiles, because now it's middle of summer, livestock in the fields and all these electric fences are live so they're not going to kill you but you'll certainly get a rude awakening this particular part of the track further up is also overgrown now unlike the one down below there are a few trodden areas so there's been recent activity like pilgrims coming through here this is all uphill once again so on a wet day, if you're coming on St. Declan's Way and coming along through this part on stage four, make sure you have the gear. One other, one other thing I'd like to mention. If you are walking alone like I am, just be careful you don't get hurt. I'll tell you why I'm telling you that now is I have a 5G phone, an iPhone 14 Pro Max, two to three weeks old. And I found places today, no coverage. Minimum, maximum rather, 3G. Normally my phone is always on 5G. So I don't know how you would manage if you were to twist your ankle and you were walking alone in some parts so just be aware of that your phone may not be giving you the reception that you should have in case you need it all right Another point. God, I'm full of points this afternoon. If you come to uh, an area where there are gates, it's okay if you can climb over a stile. This one here now you just meander around a, a big farm gate. But if you come to a gate that needs to be opened, and as opposed to climbing over it, you open it. For goodness sake, make sure that the gate is closed when you, before you leave the site. Animals get onto the roads, animals escape into other people's property, and it's just not fair on landowners who give us the right to walk through this gorgeous, beautiful countryside in West Waterford. So treat the country as it ought to be treated. Just take your rubbish home with you, any drink bottles. I've come across so much rubbish today now, it's just, it just makes me pure bloody old mad. I mean, you bring it in, you bring a bottle, or bottles in full, you drink them on the way and you throw them into one side when they're empty. So what kind of logic is that, for goodness sake? I mean, it's the, the countryside is littered with, with people opening windows and chucking stuff onto the road. Just back down the track there. I, there's a whole heap of Coke and Fanta bottles thrown on the ditch. They were brought in here full, they were drank, en route, and then chucked to one side. It just doesn't make sense and it causes littering and it also endangers animals. So make sure you treat the country properly, close gates, only leave your footprint and enjoy your walk.
I've just consumed about a litre and a half or thereabouts of Ishka in the shelter. Found that little babbling brook. Today's walk, stage four, from Lismore to Capoquin and here to Aglish. I'm, I'm 1.2 kilometers to Aglish. This is where my trek will finish for today. Now the road behind me there, that's where I'll start the next day. And it'll take me from here to the final destination of Ardmore um, in, in, West, in County Waterford. So stage four finishes in the, in the village of Aglish, 1.2 kilometers to my left. And the next stage will be stage five. I'll be taking the road right behind me there. And it'll take me all the ways through to Ardmore, where i would finish my pilgrim walk. So I'm now making my way down to the village of Aglish and I'll get my passport, my St. Declan's Way passport, stamped there. Um, I'll let you know the distances that I covered on foot today when I arrive in Aglish. Once again, I'd like to thank you for tagging along with me. You're great company, but it's been a beautiful, a beautiful walk. It's um, punishing at times in the heat and the big backpack, of course, but uh, consuming lots of water. It's just over 23 degrees now, and it's been a hot one for walking long distance. But isn't this what pilgrim walking is all about? If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. But I would like to encourage everybody to consider at least walking one or two or three or all of the stages on this pilgrim walk. I don't think you'll regret it. I think it'll make you feel better. I, since I began this walk, I find that I'm more, I'm calmer in my, my thinking. I find that I embrace nature even more so than I did before I began this walk. So. The, 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 the hours upon hours of walking alone and having nature for company and of course you but having nature for company has done me wonders it was a sort of a therapeutic uh, episode in my life but I'm not finished yet I still have one final stage to do stage 5 from here in Aglish to Ardmore so thank you for tagging along and um, I appreciate it. For you. I appreciate your likes and your comments and your shares and your chats. Um, as I said to you before, you are my driving force. So have a good day. Take care of each other. Mind yourselves. Stay safe. God bless and bye for now. Here I am outside the village of Aglish. So on my St. Declan's Way, on my St. Declan's Way trek, I've reached the end of stage four. Now, 
for a cool drink and whatever else can be got in Eglish, I'm having it. So, chat on stage five.